Hello, my name is Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton Certified Trainer and Associate Professor at the University of Colorado Denver, and I'm going to demonstrate how to master a track in Ableton Live. So the first thing I'm going to do is just prepare a single audio track. So I'm going to get rid of the default two MIDI tracks and get rid of one of the other audio tracks that I don't need. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see what the sample rate and bit depth of my file is. If it's a different sample rate, I'm going to make sure that the sample rate matches Ableton Live. So I'm going to go to my audio file I'm going to master. And it's this one here, the song eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and get info. And when I look over here to the left hand side, I can see it's 48K, 24 bits. And so that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go into my arrangement view. So I'm gonna press tab on the keyboard and then go back to my audio folder. And I'm gonna drag that track into the audio track in Ableton Live. Now, if it hasn't been imported in Ableton Live yet, it might take a second for it to be analyzed. So give it a second, and here it is. Now, I can't stress this enough. The most important thing to do when you're importing long files is to make sure that they're not being warped. Otherwise, it's going to transform the sound of the track originally. So I'm going to double click on it, and in the detail view, I see that warp is on. So I'm going to make sure to turn that off. So with that turned off, now I don't have to worry about any artifacts from warping and it's going to play back at the right tempo. One thing you can do to prevent this in the future is to go into preferences in Ableton Live and then under um, under record warp launch I can turn this auto warp long samples off so that's default set to on. I'm going to turn that off so now I won't ever do that again when I'm importing entire songs into Ableton Live. So now in Ableton Live, I'm going to process this using mastering tools. Now I'm going to use almost all stock devices that come with Ableton Live 10 Suite. The only exception is I'm going to use a loudness meter that doesn't come with Ableton Live. I'm going to recommend a free one for you. It's this Ulean loudness meter. So it's free. You can buy a pro version if you want to get fancier features. But go to Ulean, Y-O-U-L-E-A-N dot C-O. And under plugins, you get the Ulean loudness meter. You can download it, install it, and it works on Mac and PC. And it gives you the loudest information that you'll need to create a great master. So the first thing I do is listen to my track a little bit and hear what I have. So it's a synthesized track. Now, the first device I like to add, especially with electronic stuff, I'm going to shift tab here to go into my device view under the detail view down here at the bottom. And I'm going to grab the utility. The utility device is very handy. And the number one function that I use with it is this base mono function. I use that in mastering quite a bit because with really low sub stuff, it's a lot tighter if it's solid mono. So then it projects equally in both speakers simultaneously. It makes a more solid, cleaner bass sound. So what I'm going to do is just click mono or base mono button on the utility device. And now I can also click the preview of it. So now when I'm playing back the track, I can hear where exactly that cutoff is. And I keep it around 120 hertz or so. Make sure to turn that monitoring off, to turn the previewing off. And now I can hear the track with the bass monoed. And if I want to adjust the stereo width of that, I can. I can just uh, increase or decrease. Sometimes I might want to increase just a little bit. So it'll increase everything except for the bass stuff, 132 hertz and below. And so it might make it a little wider. It depends on what you want to do. But that's your call to make. So the next bit of processing I'm going to add is the EQ8. So I want to EQ the song. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of how exactly you should EQ a song for mastering. You can learn about that yourself. I'm more going into the technical aspects of mastering in Ableton Live. So with this EQ8, I can click on this expand view and get a nice broad view of it and you know EQ the track a little bit. I'm going to maybe take some low mid out, put a little sparkle back in, and maybe add some sub stuff so the kick hits a little harder.
Now, one handy thing to note about the EQ is if I hold down my Option key while I'm dragging up and down, it'll adjust the Q or the width of that EQ. A little more sparkle that way. The next device I'm going to add is the glue compressor. So I want a compressor on here, and the glue compressor is perfect for a stereo mix. It's great on your stereo bus. It's great when you're mastering. So I'm going to grab the glue compressor. So I'm going to take it, and then I'm going to expand this triangle and grab the Make It Loud preset. So I'm going to drag that into the track. And how I dial this in is I don't really need to touch anything ex except this threshold. So I'm going to dial the threshold down. So I see that the makeup gain is set to 5 dB. So I'm going to bring the threshold down until it's attenuating the track about 5 dB. So this is how I'm going to dial it in. So it makes a nice subtle effect on there, but it reminds me of the rug and the Big Lebowski. It really ties the room together. So it'll bring things closer to your face a little bit and make things a little bit bigger. So that's why I really like that uh, preset and particularly the, the glue compressor. Now, one thing that you might want to do, especially if you're doing electronic stuff or hip hop stuff, if you notice that the compressor is reacting too much from the bass drum or the kick drum, and it's really making the song sounds like like it's it's pumping every time that kick drum hits. What you can do is side chain the EQ of that. So if I expand that glue compressor, and I go, to, it opens up the side chain section. So I can EQ and have it so it filters off the low end. So the compressor is only reacting to everything above whatever that cutoff frequency I set at. So. I can preview it. I can hold on the audition button and listen to that EQ side chain and adjust my cutoff there. And maybe 200 is a good spot to place it if you're trying to get the kick drum out of there. So now I want to make sure I turn the listen off so I don't listen to the side chain anymore. And now I'm going to make some adjustments to my threshold to make sure that I'm attenuating about that 5 dB. I mean, it's not so much of an effect on this song, but if you have songs that are really bass or kick heavy, that might be a function you want to use when you're mastering your track. Now, before I go to my final dynamics, one thing I want to do is maybe make it a little fatter sounding. So I like to use the saturator, and the saturator does some sort of analog simulation, which will create extra harmonics and make it sort of a richer sound. Um, so... I'm going to go the saturator and I like to use the a little a bit warmer there. So here's it without it on there. I'm going to drag it on that. Now, this will be too much. I'm just going to tell you right now it's going to be too much saturation. So it's too much, but what I do is I dial the dry wet down. Uh, by default, this preset has it at 62% almost wet. I'm going to bring it down to maybe about 15-ish or maybe a little bit less wet. So now it's something along the, like this. Maybe just a touch less. And 
I'll make a richer sound. So now I need to see how loud my track is. And this is going to be important for streaming uh, on Spotify or Apple Music or YouTube. All the streaming services stream at a specific level. And so I'm going to see where my sound is at first. So I'm going to go to plugins in my third party plugin, go to VST, drag down and grab that Uline loudest meter. I'm going to drop it at the very end of the chain there. So now with this open, I'm going to see where the LUFS is on this song. So hit play. <laughs> So the last part of the song is showing me it's at minus 13 LUFS and my true peak is minus 2.2. So what do these numbers mean? Well, I'm going to go to Spotify and show you really quick. On their website, under their Mastering Loudness Frequently Asked Questions, it asks, will Spotify play my track at the level it's mastered? They will play it at minus 14 dB LUFS with a minus 1 dB true peak. So what this means is I need to at least hit minus 14 dB. Anything above that, it will be turned down. So I can't make it super loud and make it play back louder on Spotify, louder than any other track. So usually a safe bet is to aim for like minus 12 because all the services will turn them down. Only Spotify will turn them up. So I want to make sure I'm at least a little bit over the minus 14 target there. So I aim for like minus 12. So since my LUFS was a little about minus 13, I'm going to need to limit it a little bit more. So I'm going to go into the limiter in Ableton Live. So I'm going to go to Devices, Audio Effects, and just grab the limiter, and I'm going to drop that. Now you want to make sure to place it before the loudness meter so you can get uh, an accurate reading of what the limiter is doing to the sound. So I'm going to place it after the saturator but before the loudness meter. So we scroll over a little bit. And I'm going to set my ceiling to minus one because the streaming services want a true peak not higher than minus one. So I'm going to aim for that. And I'm going to turn my gain up like 2 dB-ish or so. So now I'm going to play this track and see where it reads on the loudness meter. I'm going to click this X button to reset it and then play it here. <laughs> So my true peak winds up being at minus 0.5. So I need to bring my peak down a little bit to get that closer to a minus 1. So I'm going to close this and go back to my limiter, bring the ceiling down to minus 1.5. And maybe my gain up just a little bit more to compensate for that. I want to make sure at least it's hitting a little bit on that attenuation. So uh, let's play it now. And let's see what it looks like on the softer sections of the song. So I can see my true peak needs to be brought down a little bit. So I'm going to bring the ceiling down to minus 2. Click in there and type minus 2. So now my master is the loudness that I want, a little bit over what Spotify is aiming for. So everything will bring it down just a little bit. Um, the limiter is working a little bit. The true peak's not too hot. So now I'm just going to make sure to trim the end of my song and get it the length that I want it to be. Now when I go to trim a song in Ableton Live, 
One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the grid off. So I'm going to go back to my regular EQ here and expand my track. And I'm going to turn my grid off because otherwise my bars, the cursor is always stopping and all my edits stop exactly on a bar. And that's not exactly what I want. So I'm just going to right click and I can turn the fixed grid off. So now I can place my, my cursor exactly anywhere I want. So I'm going to zoom in to the end of the song, into the track. And then I can see that it, this chorus, this probably just goes on forever. <laughs> So I can apply a long fade. So in this arrangement view, in the upper right, I see these triangles show up, or these uh, squares show up. I can use that to fade my track out and adjust my fade. And you can go in the middle and grab this point and adjust the curve if you want. So now I can play it back and hear if I like that fade. <laughs> Perfect. Now it's time to export the track. Now I can't specifically tell you exactly how, what format and sample rate and bit depth that you need to export your track. That's going to be dependent on what your target audience is and, or what your distribution platform is. You'd want to check with TuneCore or DistroKid or whoever you're distributing your song to to see what format they want or what they think is ideal. But in this case, I'm just going to export this as a 16-bit 44.1 wave file, which is CD quality. So I'm going to go in here and uh, just hide the whole track. That way I, I know I'm exporting the entire track. And I'm going to go to File, Export Audio Video. And I see it's this whole length here. Um, I'm going to make sure that Normalize is turned off. And I don't need to create a, an analysis file. CD sample rate is 44.1, so I'm going to select that. Uh, wave, PCM, I'm going to set to 16 bits, and under the dither options, I'm just going to set up a regular um, Power 3 dither. Um, if I want to make an MP3, it'll make an MP3 simultaneously if I want. You can set it to upload to SoundCloud and stuff like that, but I just want to make a regular WAV file, 16-bit, and export it. So from here, now I'm going to create a 16-bit WAV file of my master. So I'm going to click on Export. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. What song? Eight. Master. So now it's processing it. Now, one thing you'll want to do before anything else is just double check your master. I can't stress this enough. So I'm going to take that track and drag it in here. Just so I can check sure check and make sure that the master plays back correctly. So I'm going to turn this track off and import that audio track. So I'm going to go to my desktop again. I'm going to grab this master track, drag it into a new track. And now I'm going to do a quality control and just listen to just this track and make sure it plays back the way I want it to play back. So that's it for mastering. Just make sure you double check your mix or your master and before you send it off and listen carefully and make sure it sounds exactly how you want it to sound and then send it off. Don't just assume everything works right because with computers, nothing ever goes as planned. <laughs>